Hello again and welcome. This is going to be a multi-part shader tutorial on how to use shaders in Game Maker Studio. So I've been wanting to do this for a while but I haven't felt really comfortable. So we'll see how this goes but this will be a multi-part series where this is part one and I'll go over how to Basically, what a, what a sh how a shader works and um, how to change some colors around. And then in part two, I'll start sending variables into the shader so that uh, it can <coughs> change, <coughs> change over time. Excuse me. Uh, and then we'll see what happens in part three and part four. Maybe we'll do some wobbling effects or something. So. I've set up this little scene with uh, this little guy following my mouse and then a red, green and blue uh, circle. So let's go ahead and talk about a uh, shader. Let's make a new one. So we create a shader here. Uh, shade, I'm going to name it color because we're going to make this change the color. <coughs> so a shader is basically a separate program that runs on your graphics card. So, and it has two parts, the vertex and the fragment. We're not gonna be using the vertex basically at, uh, not at all, I would say. This is, I think this is mostly used for 3D and when you're using it for 2D, well, I don't use it for 2D, basically. I think well, I have used it for 2D sometimes, but you don't use it a lot. So, the vertex shader, we're going to have to go through it anyway, because it's sort of important, because it uh, is connected to the frag fragment shader. So you have these three guys over here, uh, which GameMaker automatically sends to this shader. So it's a vector with three values, with uh, the position, just x, y, and z, and you can't stop <laughs> Game Maker from doing this, uh, as far as I know, uh, and you don't want to. But you have three variables that you get in. One is a vector three with positions like x, y, and z. One is a color, red, green, blue, and alpha, and then texture coordinates u, v. Um, Okay, so that's three variables that get into this. And then we have two with the keyword here, varying, which means that they will be sent to the fragment shader. So we have texture coordinates and color. And if you go to the fragment, you can see, oh, you have also varying, which means they come in. Uh, sorry about this. Um, so, yeah, you have varying texture coordinate and color. And texture coordinate color. But the vertex shader is run first. So, I actually, there are keywords called out and in, which I think are newer, but uh, that makes more sense to me. <laughs> so, you use out, you could use out here, texture v coordinate, and then in here, which makes more sense than varying and varying. But anyway, that's how it works. So then GameMaker does some magic here. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, it's basically doing nothing. It's just make sure that uh, you get out, but you're also sending in. So nothing changes. <coughs> and then they also make sure that these two variables that are supposed to be going to the fragment shader are uh, filled with some uh, uh, some values. So let's go over to the fragment shader where we're gonna do our coding. So this fragment shader is also called pixel shader uh, because it's run once for ed for each pixel into the texture. So if a uh, sprite is 10 by 10, it's going to be run 100 times. 
Um, so this, you need to have this line in any game maker fragment shader. The GL frag color is what the computer will expect to get out of this. It needs something to get, uh, and this is a ve uh, vector four, which is a, a color like uh, red, green, blue, and alpha, like we showed in the vertex shader. And this is the important part where uh, the shader finds the color in GameMaker's texture at the current pixels coordinate. So remember this text coordinate is the current uh, coordinate inside the texture page that GameMaker makes. And this one, the color also sent directly through here, the vertex shader. And it's basically the, your, if you have a draw set color in GameMaker, if you have that to red or whatever, then this will be a red color. And you multiply red by the normal texture. So that's a shader. Let's keep it like this for now and just show you the code inside this uh, red, green, blue uh, object. And we're gonna draw with the normal shader and see if anything happens, and it should. So if you've used surfaces before, you're gonna be you're gonna be familiar with this. Hang on a second. Okay, I'm back. I changed my mic settings for the recording because now we're gonna start typing and it sounds awful on the other mic, I think. Okay, so um, where were I? Where were we? Yeah, so okay, let's set and draw with the shader. So like I said, if you've done surfaces before, this is gonna be very familiar. But first we need to check if the shader has compiled properly. Shader is compiled. Basically if someone hasn't updated their uh, graphics card drivers or something like that, then the shader might not compile properly. And then it's gonna cause an error if we don't do this. If shader is compiled, shade color. <coughs> so, if it's compiled, then we set it. Shader set. And shader reset when we're done. Like I said, this is very very similar to surfaces where you just do surface set and surface reset. And anything you draw in between is drawn to the surface. And in this case, anything you draw here will be drawn with this shader, will be run through the shader. <coughs> so let's just draw ourselves. And still we haven't changed anything in this uh, shader, so it's just it's gonna look uh, the same. And yeah, there we go. <clears throat> so now let's change it so only the red color is visible, for example. So to do this, we create a new vector. And <clears throat> there are a lot of variable types in uh, this GLSL shader language, so we can go through them. You have uh, you have booleans, which is just true or false, integers, uh, oh, integers, float, decimal, numbers, and then you have vector 2, vector 3, and vector 4. So since we're gonna create a new color here, we're going to need a vector 4, which has red, green, blue, and alpha values. Um, so let's go ahead and say vector 4 color, ch color change is a new vector 4 
with red channel 1 and then the blue, uh, green 0 blue 0 and alpha still 1 and then we go ahead and multiply this by color change so now this color this is also a vector 4 so that means that the red in this one will be multiplied by the red in this one which is just 1 in this case then and for and the blue and green the green and blue channels will be multiplied by 0 meaning they would be should be black so let's run that and there we go we have a red circle and then two black ones uh, and then because this is the red channel let's just show you just how it works it's really simple now just change it to the green one now we have green so what happens if we do the same let's copy this for this character that's white so we do the same here for this character we set the shader to this one and then we draw ourselves now as you may know white is just a combination of all of the colors it's basically one 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 for each of them so red full red full green full blue but now we have made it so that uh, only the green channel will be visible so this is gonna cause a nice little blend for our character in green looking good and what else can we do? We can obviously set it to. Let's try it like five times green. I wonder if that even changes anything. Yeah, it makes it uh, super, super green. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. If. So, even if the green channel is only like just a little bit of green we multiply it up to making it like almost full green we can obviously also keep like the green and the blue channel and then it would be just removing the red color making this yeah light blue and for this the green and the blue is visible and the red one is black so that's the first step to shaders and I think that's it for part one if you want to see more please hit the like button and head over to part two um, where we will start sending variables to the shaders like I said GameMaker does it for this automatically uh, but we can also do it ourselves so that we can make a change over time or depending on where in the room we are and so on uh, so yeah thanks for watching I hope this helped and we'll see you in the next video